car decks are now open. You may enter them from any stairwell or the elevator. If your car is on the upper car deck, please come to the purser's foyer and enter the car deck. Don't forget about the party at 3 p.m. in the purser's foyer. So it turns out you can access your vehicle during the ferry cruise. Some people said you can only access it in ports, but it turns out you can come down and access it every day, four times a day. They have different call times. Because people actually have to keep their pets down here in their cars while they're up on the ferry, that is definitely one perk to coming down here, is there are so many puppies running around. I was really scared that we wouldn't be able to come in here until tomorrow, our first port, but here we are. And now, I'm gonna change. All right, do we got everything? I hope so, but if not, we can come back in six hours. I feel like everyone's coming down here to play with their dogs, but Clementine is like our little baby. We had to come and check in on her and make sure she's doing okay. All right, be good. Don't <laughs> pee while we're gone. If we come back and there's a bunch of liquid underneath the RV, we oh. got a big problem. <laughs> Good afternoon, adventurers, from the middle of the ocean. Good afternoon. Well, not exactly the middle of the ocean. We are actually hugging the coast of Alaska. It's right over there. If you missed our last video, we actually boarded Clementine and Ruby onto a ferry bound for Alaska. Yeah, instead of driving the 40 plus hours up to Alaska, we decided we'd let the boat ferry us the 40 plus hours up to Alaska. We showed you guys how we set this up. It was a wild experience. Yeah, we boarding will... the ferry was pretty crazy. <laughs> boarding and it was just all bananas. But we'll link to that video on the screen somewhere here. But the way this ferry works is you can get a stateroom and it kind of works like a cruise. They have like a lot of different amenities on board. But if you can't get a stateroom, you can camp out on the deck of the boat, which is what we're doing. It's one of the weirdest <laughs> forms of transportation I have ever experienced, y'all. People can tent camp outside. They can sleep in loungers. They can sleep inside in the observatories. People have air mattresses set up everywhere. Basically, if there's an open spot on the floor, you can sleep there. But the whole thing ends up looking like a disaster camp or something. And it almost feels like one because, y'all, it gets so windy and crazy out here at night. Yeah. So last night was our first night on board and our first night sleeping in our tent. And it was not great. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it wasn't the worst <laughs> night's sleep we ever had. But. No, but if you can hear, the engines are humming very loudly, more yeah. like yelling maybe over there. Yeah, and there's some nice consistent fumes coming off that you get a whiff of every now and then. And I don't know why, but the winds picked up so much. So our whole tent was just going like this. It was literally picking up our mattress in there with us on yeah, it. Yeah, the earplugs were no match for the amount of noise. <laughs> and the ground kind of rumbles, which is a little bit soothing, but that coupled with the wind, coupled with the smell really wasn't that soothing. Sadly, the wildfires are making it a little hazy, but we're hoping it yeah. clears up in the next day or so. But today we wanted to take you guys inside the ferry and show you what life is like on this because we're going to be on this for over three days. Yes. We haven't really gotten seasick yet, but there's there's going to be time for that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So our tape job is holding fairly well on these four corners, but this one did not survive the night. It actually did survive the night, but then it popped off this morning. I'm not sure how. Maybe we pulled on it too hard or something. Well, I'm not 100% convinced that somebody didn't kick it too. Oh yeah, that's People probably what happened. keep coming up here to take pictures because this is like the middle of the back of the boat and people keep bringing chairs and stuff. This is my secret technique to make a little hook loop for the tape. That way it's held here, but it's also got something that's, it's kind of like sticking through so I can't like slide through the tape again. We're gonna be experts at taping down tents. <laughs> yeah, just in time to disembark. So first things first, this is the deck where all the cabins are, AKA the fancy people. <laughs> people who don't have any adventurous bones in their body. <laughs> or the people who book early, you know, and want to pay for a cabin. <laughs> Not us though, dang it. We're here for the adventure. So this is set up kind of like a cruise ship. You can see they have these maps all over the place, just like a cruise ship would have. Cocktail lounge, restroom, snack bar. So you can kind of figure out where everything is. We still have managed to get lost. <laughs> So the stairwells are not always in the same locations and they end kind of abruptly. So you go down one, 
then you have to run around here and come down here and then go up and over it's yeah, like part of the fun of it it's such a small ship but it takes a while to figure out your way around it does i keep getting confused about what floor i'm on and i'm so confident and then i get to the end and i'm like this is not where i'm meant to be one super nice thing about this ferry is that it's very small so all of the hallways you can quickly get out to observation decks like this which is extra handy because you see a lot of marine wildlife out here and they actually make announcements on the port side and what's the other side starburst starburst i just say right and starboard left. starboard <laughs> starburst i knew it wasn't starburst they make announcements so so far we have seen humpback whales we have seen i think a killer whale we have seen dolphins, dolphins. we've seen otters so everyone goes running to one side or the other it's very cool bring your binoculars or a camera with a big old zoom lens We're living up in the solarium for our little journey. And if you're not tent camping, you can actually just pick a lounge chair and sleep in that. One really nice thing is that A, you're covered. So if it starts raining, which I think it typically does, I'm hoping it won't for us, you're covered from that. And they have heaters up in here. I just realized that. It's <laughs> so maybe it wasn't a great idea for us to be way out there, but we get the better view, right? Yeah, I don't think you're allowed to set up tents back here, but uh, man, I'm gonna be sneaking in here more yeah, often. This is nice. <laughs> oh. Y'all, they even have a recliner lounge that I think is supposed to be like a movie theater lounge area, but none of the TVs are actually working in there. So people are just camped out sleeping. But it does say to clear it out from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., but I don't think anyone's enforcing that, so. Nobody seems to be enforcing it a lot. It's kind of nice, actually. The boat is super chill. You can kind of just do what you want. Yeah. Nobody's too anal about it, but. but uh, they also said, don't bring on your own booze, but of course no one has checked for any of that. So I, I suppose you could if you wanted to. Yeah, but you don't have to worry about sneaking on booze or anything like that because they have a freaking bar on board oh my gosh you guys they have a playroom <laughs> it's really not much of a playroom <laughs> they no. have that slide though whatever those are and uh, a couple chairs <laughs> when she, i guess somebody it. was in the naughty corner earlier huh yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the uh walls are nice and carpeted so your kids can scream to their heart's content or you can <laughs> Just put like a scream sound over that. So I know it says do not leave your children unattended in the playroom, but you're, you're definitely staying here. <laughs> <gasps> no! Are you putting me in the timeout yeah, chair? Yeah, get in that timeout chair. <laughs> So this is the lower deck. You can also camp out here, as you can see, but you'll also notice there are far less people. And I think that's because you get a lot of rumble down here, which I think we've already mentioned, but it's basically like twice as much rumble as you get up there, because I think you're just closer to the engine. But the plus side is that I think you're shielded from a lot more wind down here. So the whole experience is a lot quieter. There's far less people down here. It's just more peaceful in general. But I'm still feeling confident about our spot up on the solarium. I think that's still the way to go. Or maybe I just don't feel like moving our tent. I don't know. <laughs> I think it, it might be that. If you're up here with a little bit of a rumble, yeah, then... Yeah, I think I could deal with the rumble. Yeah, then maybe the lower deck's the better option. There is no Wi-Fi and usually no cell signal on this journey. So luckily, they have a little book exchange if you're feeling frisky. Although the selection is uh, very weird and limited. Well, I mean, they have some of the classics, you know. <laughs> Hoyle's Rules of the Game. Mm -hmm. Third revised and updated edition. Well, you can't go wrong with a uh, portrait of my father by George Bush. There we go. Yep. This one looks like it's been in uh, one too many bathrooms. Or maybe somebody <laughs> maybe. wrapped it overboard. Yeah. Probably shouldn't touch it. <laughs> nope. The ferry that we are sailing on is called the Columbia and it was actually built in 1974. And since then it has been on a whopping 1200 voyages. In fact, this is the 1200th voyage. Ooh, we actually just missed the uh, yeah. cake and ice cream. Yeah, we were pretty bummed out about that. But there's still plenty of ice cream on board that we can get our hands on, I'm sure. This baby is powered by two nine-cylinder diesel engines, and those are what we are listening to purring in the background, not so quietly while we're sleeping. It can hold up to 500 passengers, but it is actually at about half capacity right now, so there's about 250 people on board, which is good because it's crowded, sure, but it's not too crowded. I can imagine with double this amount of people on here, it'd be like elbow to elbow. Imagine all the tents would be fighting. Oh my God, it'd be like twice as many tents. <laughs> Man, that would be really intense. I've got that rim shot sound effect just waiting for this kind of occasion. 
In addition to passengers, as you know, this ship also carries vehicles and you can fit 134 20 foot vehicles on it to give you kind of an idea of the capacity. And to be honest, that is way more than I ever thought they'd be able to fit on this little dinky thing when I saw it in the dock. Our little ferry is actually traveling along the Alaska Marine Highway, which was actually started in the 60s to connect all of these little remote Alaskan communities that just sit along the water that had no other way of being reached except by boat. Back then it was a much smaller passage, but today it starts all the way down in Bellingham, Washington, which is where we started our journey. And you can actually keep on going to the very edge of Alaska. Sadly, they have only a limited run this season because they're understaffed. So we're only going as high as Haines, Alaska, which is about halfway up. <laughs> Not quite into the main Alaska, but yeah. as far as we could go. We're actually taking what's called the inside passage of the Marine Highway, which means that we are scooting through thousands of little islands on our way. It's really neat because instead of just having vast ocean on one side, you are always totally surrounded by epic forests and lands and little tiny towns and lighthouses and all kinds of cool stuff. It keeps it very interesting. There's a digital map inside that shows exactly where you are in the passage and it shows you where all the little lighthouses are so you can get ready for photo opportunities. Am I sail sail selling it? Am I, am I? Are you sailing it? Is that am what you want? Selling? You were so eloquent up to this point. <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore, y'all. It's only day one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, y'all, we officially made it to another port. Time to throw out the anchor. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I thought for a second you were actually gonna throw that thing. <laughs> it's not that kind of anchor. Besides, you don't even have a rope attached to it, <laughs> you dope. Oh yeah? There you go. All right, anchor's away. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't like having this so close to the edge. It scared me too. <laughs> That's right, once again, Anchor is sponsoring this video. We wanted to give them a huge shout out and thank you for supporting our channel. Everyone else on this ship has been trying to find outlets. As you look around, you see random phones and chargers and devices just strewn all about. But not us, y'all. We have our handy Anchor Solix C1000. The first thing that we absolutely love about this little bad boy is how fast it charges. It has this thing called ultra fast charge mode and when you use your phone to activate it, it can be fully charged in about 58 minutes. Of course, it has a port to plug solar panels directly into it as well. It has a total of 11 different charging ports so you can charge a ton of stuff at one time. And it can output up to 1800 watts of power. So that means you can run all manner of devices with the blenders, cooktops you can even run a freaking microwave with this thing and i just love how freaking rugged this thing is it's a beast it's not too heavy they built it so that it's impact resistant so when you're doing goofy stuff like this if you drop it probably won't break <laughs> you can be a part of the anchor solix c1000 pre-sale you can sign up to get a 25 percent discount on this unit and enter drawing for a chance to win the anchor solix portable solar panels mag go or the anchor everfrost 40. we ain't gonna be caught dead in the water keeping our stuff all charged up baby <laughs> was that a joke there's ship, probably some kind of joke, joke there. Yeah, I don't know. Was, <laughs> ship jokes are too a, easy. It was a ship joke. If... A shippy joke? A shippy joke. This is getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> all right. We're going to leave all this stuff to charge up is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Holy cow, y'all. That, that horn has been going off about once every five minutes for the last hour. <laughs> and it is just so loud. And it is 5 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> it's been oh going off gosh. since like 4 or something. It's a shame because we, I feel like we were sleeping really good. There was no wind. I was just like out. And then all of a sudden, Wah! It will not stop. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's literally rumbling the whole freaking bed. And there's also just some kind of low-flying airplane that keeps going right past us. So another point to getting a stateroom. <laughs> yeah. We actually pulled into our first stop, which is Ketchikan, and we got four bars of signal, baby. Woohoo! Yeah. We've been in the dead zone for like the last 24 hours. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> Plus, it's like everyone starts stirring, you know, because they're all getting their stuff ready to get off the boat. So everyone's just walking all around here. They're hooting and hollering. They're screaming. <laughs> it was pretty rough, man. We picked the wrong night to stay up till midnight. <laughs> yeah. We stay up way too late just in general, you guys. <laughs> we always screw ourselves. A buzz off. I'm gonna try to sleep at least a couple more minutes. Allison's 
getting all jealous about all these little houses on these islands. No, people have these immaculate homes on these pristine little islands, these perfect little trees coming out of it. I just wonder, how do you get that? It has to be inherited, right? Yeah, Somebody claimed so. it hundreds of years ago. Freaking and lucky. Passed down. If you've got a home out here in Alaska on some island. Please and, invite us. <laughs> yeah, and you want to hang out with us, we would love to come and hang out with you. <laughs> As you've seen, there's been a lot of wildfire smoke on this trip, so we haven't had really clear views, except today is really nice. It's really clearing up up here. But there is one guy over here burning something, and the smoke is wafting over to this little town and just completely covering it. So I guess it just really shows you how the smallest fire can create an amazing amount of smoke. Yeah, so this... it can just get trapped and waft around, you know. Yeah. We just came to the front of the ship area to get some work done. It's kind of our favorite spot to just hunker down and do some laptop time because we have the wraparound windows up here and there's usually plenty of seating. There's also power at each one of these little posts here. So if you don't have a power bank like we do, you can stay all charged up. We have seen a few other random outlets kind of here and there on the ship, but they're not in really accessible areas. So this is really the only spot we've noticed where you can kind of sit down and actually have room to plug stuff in. In addition to all the stuff we've shown you so far, they also have showers on this ship, which we were very surprised to learn. They have four stalls. There's never been a line or anyone else in there when we've used it. The water stays nice and hot. And the best part is they're completely free. You can rent the towel for a dollar, which we have been doing just to make our lives a little easier and not have to carry around towels. But if you do happen to have laundry, they actually have washers and dryers. So you don't gotta be all stanky on your ferry trip. <laughs> and they sell soap and everything, both for yourself and for your laundry. Man, when we were in Ketchikan this morning, we had a ton of signal. We were just trying to get as much done as possible, but now we are in the dead zone again. <laughs> so Eric can still edit, but I'm just kind of twiddling my thumbs over here. Actually, I was sitting here for an hour working and then I get up and look over there. She's just playing games on her phone. <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> showered i made i got you lunch and yeah stuff. that is true she made up for it <laughs> acting like i'm working acting like i'm working i really do need to work so buzz off <laughs> so how was your uh, final night in the tent <laughs> guys i feel like every night just gets worse and worse <laughs> the wind was so bad last night i mean like violently throwing our tent around. I kept getting scared that this was gonna come down and impale me, like it was gonna break and just get wedged into me. Imagine sleeping and somebody just pushing you yeah, like this. That is exactly what it That's felt like. <laughs> it's very annoying. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. If you're doing this sailing, do a stateroom or sleep in one of the lounge chairs. I don't know if a tent is the right way to go. <laughs> it's... We'll definitely get closer to the covered awning over there. Yeah, under an awning is good. It blocks the sound, it blocks the wind. This is our last day, but it is an entire day. We're actually on this ship until, well, technically tomorrow, 1 a.m. So we still have a long time to go. Our next stop is gonna be Juno around five o'clock. And then our ultimate stop is Haynes at 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah, and then we have to get the vehicles off and then try to find somewhere to sleep. So it's gonna be like two or three probably. So at least after this, we can sleep in and probably chill for a while. But for now, we're in desperate need of coffee, breakfast, and just Wait. a little bit of chill. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got our growler. Coffee growler. Yes, my best friend. <laughs> At our first official whale sighting of the day. It's been a few days since we've seen one. And oh my gosh, what is that? I think there might be another one out there. Oh, I guess it was right here all along. She got this at the gift shop at the ferry terminal. <laughs> well, I wanted a captain's hat and they didn't have any. And then we saw this magnificent hat. We figured this would at least give us good luck to maybe see some whales on the journey. And it did, and it obviously. Worked. All right, whales, come to me. I am one of you. We have one final daunting task breaking down the tent yeah and we want to do it before the boat gets underway and the wind picks up and yeah it gets dark we lose the light and all that but i'm gonna be sad to see it go because we did a really good job you yes me good, i mean y'all it literally held up during like hurricane force winds and rain and people walking by and going oh oopsie doopsie <laughs> Thank you. 
my word. We made it to Haynes. It's one in the morning. We're very tired. We feel like we've been hit by a bus. Man, after not sleeping well for three nights. We're so close. Are I you guess, doing the honors? Yeah, should I do Ruby? Yeah, you can have fun on the little lift this time. Oh yeah, okay. I'll go down with old Clementine. Get her in ship top sh shape. You lost it. <laughs> um, we were dead asleep, y'all, when they made the announcement that <laughs> yeah. we were here, and I just feel like I'm in a dreamland. We made it. Oh, welcome home. <laughs> yes. So there's, glad to be in this and not in the tent, huh? There's not any wind at all tonight. So maybe it would have been a lovely <laughs> night in the tent, but I don't care. I'm done. I'm gonna sleep up there and it's gonna be wonderful and beautiful. Yeah, so we're in the uh, parking lot of the ferry terminal in Haines, Alaska. So that's the northernmost point that we could get that's you know, still driving distance to Anchorage. We got Clementine, we got Ruby back there. And we man, made it. I'm excited. <laughs> Alaskans now. Yeah, I would be more excited if it wasn't 2 a.m. right now, but yes, we got sir. off pretty quick though. I, I got to ride the elevator with Ruby. How was that? <laughs> it was awesome. You didn't roll off. No, That's I didn't. Good. If you do the ferry, make sure you estimate the length of your vehicle exactly. Um, because every foot counts. I would go for the stateroom if you can, if it's available. The tent uh, was a little little sketchy as you guys saw. Or you could just sleep in a lawn chair. <laughs> I actually think that that's ultimately better than staying in the tent. <laughs> that's the way to do it. The stateroom, the lawn chair, and the, then the, the tent, tent is way down here. <laughs> but we did it. It was an adventure. We camped yeah. out on a tent on a ferry in Alaska. That's something. <laughs> yeah. Is, are we done? Yeah. Can this we is, be done? This is over. Okay. Goodbye, adventure. We'll see you on the road.